The Pantera series by Fender was extremely popular amongst guitarists that love vintage style guitars, but these are the Pantera 2 guitars by Fender, and we're gonna show you why you're gonna love these guitars even more. Welcome back to the Gear for Music Guitar channel. My name is Jordan and today I am joined by Daniel. How are we doing? Very good, how are you Jordan? Yes, I'm very well. I'm super excited because we have the new Vintera 2 range from Fender. And Daniel, you, you know a little bit more than I do about these. Can you tell me just, I mean, first of all, let's start off with Vintera. What is Vintera and how is it different from the other ranges that Fender have? The most important thing about Vintera is that is a, it's, it pays homage to specific decades of Fender eras, the most iconic mm -hmm. uh, eras, especially the early years of Fender. Yeah, in those decades, 50s, 60s, and 70s? Correct. So uh, each one of them will have very uh, era-specific specifications mm -hmm. that, depending on the experience you want to have, yeah. or let's say the, um, the, the the style of the guitar that you want to have, yeah. uh, a sort of a play, mm -hmm. uh, it will be somewhat different and there will be something for everybody there. All the Vintera series are all made in Mexico, is that right? Correct, they all come from the Ensenada plant mm -hmm. and um, they are to a extremely high quality. Yeah, they feel great. Like this one just feels absolutely beautifully made. Very surprising, we got them right out of the box and they were perfectly, uh, very well set it up and they were just ready to go. So with these being the Vintera 2s, what is the difference between Vintera 2 and Vintera 1? Uh, so it's not just a refresh. Vintera 2, of course, will bring some specs from the previous range, which we will talk about in a bit. But the new stuff is, first of all, there are new models which mm -hmm. were not featured in the initial run. Uh, the note caster you're holding there is probably one of the most prominent ones. So they had Vintera 50s in the first range, but in this, uh, they're bringing the note caster. Mm -hmm. uh, not we, just a Telecaster. It might look like a Telecaster, but it's a note caster, because there's no name on it. Uh, we'll talk about the history of the note caster when we start to go yeah. through the decades. Uh, but there are odd mo other models like the Bass 6. Mm -hmm. uh, Looks amazing. I love a Bass 6 guitar. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have it yet today, but it's definitely worth, like you said. Worth it's coming. Yeah, definitely. We'll about. Um, then we have the Thin Lines uh, mm -hmm. for the 60s era. And then we have also the 50, uh, 50s. It's, it's based on the 58 Jazz Master. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have other additions, some competition, 70s models as well, and the 70s, which now will have a tremolo, which we'll go more to that. But the point is, there are new models. Yeah. Uh, there are new colors mm -hmm. as well for each one of the eras. Uh, they uh, they no longer doing the mod versions of the products. I think they decided to focus uh, on the sort of a more retro ones yeah. without going too, uh, spray too much mm -hmm. into different models. Mm -hmm. Uh, on top of that, they have uh, replaced the frets. It's not a big difference, but uh, the previous Vintera one had vintage style frets. Yeah. These are vintage tall frets. Okay. Um, I think that um, one of the things with Vintera that you have to keep in mind is that all the necks have seven and a quarter inch radius. Okay. All so, them, like no matter which one it is, they're all... Correct. Quarter. They're all okay. seven and a quarter. Uh, so um, if you don't know much about, about radios, or maybe it's not something that you're very used to, seven and a quarter is very good for chords mm -hmm. and that style of playing, because that was what was back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for certain soloing, uh, it will be a bit of an um, a choir uh, mm. sort of a taste. What they did back then, and Fender has done now, is that they have replaced them by vin with vintage toll frets, mm -hmm. which will give you a bit more sustain, okay. and it will give you a bit more of the experience that you get with a modern guitar that yeah, will have yeah. perhaps medium jumbo frets. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, with, the, with some of the models like the 50s, uh, Stratocasters and the 60s ones, they have replaced uh, some of the uh, H white uh, plastic, so now it's all parchment. And if I'm not missing anything, I think that, oh, of course, the most important uh, feature mm -hmm. uh, is that all the sort of dark wood Ah, rosewood. Rosewood is yes, back. It's back, baby. Rosewood's back. 
baby. So uh, very <laughs> fortunate for us at the music industry, uh, CITES is now gone for musical instruments. Mm -hmm. They've been added as an exception. Yeah. So Fender, with the first Vintera series, they had to just get a bit more creative. So they start using Paul Ferro, yeah. which I think it's a great wood for that. Yeah, it looks, it, it's just a little bit lighter than uh, the It is. So it's it's aesthetic uh, choice. I think that now that CITES is gone, uh, they have reversed back to rosewood. Yeah. And this is a slab of rosewood. This is a definitely mm -hmm. really high quality rosewood yeah. they're using on these models. So I guess moving forward in the future for Fender, you probably see a lot more, just guitars in general, you see a lot more rosewood being used. Yes, I think. Alfaro and. Uh, it is a, I think that it will be interesting because all guitar companies move to other woods like Laurel yeah. and Amaranth, and they mm -hmm. just try all these different things and they are for the best part working. But I am a big fan of rosewood. I just love the sound and the looks of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy that at least with Vintera, they're going back to that. And that is uh, definitely quite one of, the, uh, one of the most interesting things about the new range. Cool. So with that being said, let's jump into these decade by decade and check out the guitars and see how they sound and see what's new. Let's give it a go. Let's start with the earliest decade that we have here, which is the 50s ones. Um, obviously, the one I've got here is absolutely beautiful. Um, and you've got the, the Stratocaster there. Uh, what else we've got? We've got the Jazzmaster. That is correct. And another uh, Stratocaster. So with the 50s, I mean, the 50s era of guitar playing or the 50s era of Fender, tell me a little bit more about kind of the general specs of 50s guitars, what to expect. Of course. Uh, so. Uh, the 50s is a very important decade for Fender, is their first steps. And this is where they were sort of a, experimenting a lot with different models. Mm -hmm. So the one you got there is one of the most important models for the new range, which yes. is the No Caster. For those that know the story and for those that don't, it's very funny how Leo Fender tried to release his first model as the broadcaster mm. and he received a cease and desist by the Gretsch company. Yeah. So at the last minute, he had to remove the broadcaster from the headstock yeah. and they were just sold with the Fender logo. Mm. They eventually became the no casters. And for those who are really into uh, Fender guitars, the no caster is a must have on their collection. Yeah. And there's no, I mean, you can see kind of at the top here, there's Usually where it says Telecaster, there's nothing. Like, it just says Fender. It has to be just the logo yeah. if you want to name it a no caster. A no caster. And it's really cool. I mean, it's it, it's a really nice feeling guitar. The, the neck profile on it, uh, I mean, I said earlier that it's quite a big, chunky neck, which is quite nice, but it's it's what originally the no caster had would have That's been how it came. And really um, depending on your playing style, it could actually be exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Coming from the Vintera 1 series, Vintera 2 has uh, make the profile a little thicker. So now it's actually called a 50 thick U neck. Okay. Some of the specs have been taken from the previous series, like the pickups are still the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, Telecaster pickups, which is great because those are great sounding pickups. The finish on the back is now gloss urethane. Okay. So you get that actual bit more of that experience, what it was like. And it goes mm. in theme with this range. So what was it? What was the finish on the... I think it was satin It was before. A satin. Okay, yes, cool. it used to be satin, which is also a very good play, mm -hmm. but it, depending on your take, you wouldn't consider it to be more yeah. air appropriate. Yeah, so you got that really like authentic vintage feel. Which is the idea behind the yeah. series, definitely. And yeah. you know, if you were looking to buy a no caster, an actual no caster, I, I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds, right? Probably. Uh, well, <laughs> you can get a custom shop, but we're looking at at least like a, like three, a, four grand yeah, if you want to get that. So the, the, the good thing about this is that this is probably one of the uh, most reasonably priced no casters that you can mm. find in the market right yeah. now, if not the one that you can buy brand new mm. that will have the, the actual no caster mm. moniker. Mm -hmm. 
And then your Stratocaster that you're holding right here, can you tell me a little bit about this? Of course, now 50 Stratocaster comes back from the uh, Vintera 1 range. Not a lot has changed, but the profile uh, has changed a, a, a bit. Um, can't remember the specs right now, I think it's a mid soft 50s mm -hmm. now. Uh, but they have, again, replaced the frets. They mm -hmm. are vintage tall frets now. Yeah. I believe the pickups are the same. They're, again, 50s style kind of pickup. The probably most significant thing is, as I mentioned, that the plastics have gone from HY to parchment. Mm -hmm. And finally, new colors. Yeah. It's worth mentioning because it was an omission on the first one that they actually have brought back the 50s uh, Black Strat, yes. uh, which is a iconic guitar. Mm. And on this occasion, uh, it will be available for the series as well. Uh, they, of course, have the two-tone sunburst, yeah. because you have to, it's the 50s. Yeah. And we have to, of course, mention the new addition to the 50s series, which is the 58 Jazzmaster. I mean, it looks amazing. Like, I just lo I love how Jazzmasters look, because I'm, 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 I like offsets. And Definitely. I think it just, it just looks great. And it's got, so the pick guard, first of all, let's talk about that that's on there. It's got like a, it's kind of like a, what, what would you call it? Like an anodized? It's called anodized. Is it anodized? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It's it's a beautiful Yay. guitar, definitely product of his era. Mm. Um, by the way, I call it 58, but it's 50s if you want to be technical. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely inspired on the 58s, early uh, sort of prototype models. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, now that it's available for all those fans of from surf guitar yeah, yeah. to uh, shoegaze, mm. uh, all those styles of alternative for rock. Your, for your shoegazy bands. Definitely, Amazing. yeah. And like we said earlier, it's got rosewood. I mean, and that is just a, a selling point on its own. It is definitely. Uh, people love rosewood. I love rosewood. A few of my guitars I've got are rosewood and yeah, it just looks good. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how it sounds uh, in a little bit. Obviously the bridge you've got on this is that kind of still uh, I like vintage jazz mastery bridge. A lot of the time people usually swap these out, right? Um, but obviously you get the the kind of the vintage bridge that you get on a regular jazz master anyway. Absolutely. Um, it is definitely the uh, as close as it, as it gets to the experience mm -hmm. of having one of those. If you're very into details, you'll also notice that they have aged even further at uh, the, the tip of the switch because back in the late 50s, the first runs of the Jazz Master, uh, the plastic they use will age extremely fast. Oh, really? Yes. So uh -huh. this is extremely attention to mm -hmm. detail by Fender, making sure that, again, they are in, oh, sorry, on theme mm -hmm. with what they're trying to do. Okay. Uh, there's also some bases that we'll discuss uh, on the base section. Yeah, we'll talk uh, about the bases in a little bit. But, I mean, 50s, great. Love it. I mean, the Nocaster, I, I just love Telecasters as well. So the Nocaster feels great to me. It's a really nice guitar to play. Um, and yeah, so anything else on the 50s or should we move Let's on to the 60s? Let's jump to the 60s now. Jump to the 60s. Here we go. <laughs> So here we have the 60s guitars for the Vintera 2 range. So Daniel, can you tell me what's new slash old on the uh, 60s guitars? Yes, of course. Now the 60s was uh, the era for Fender to build upon all the experience and all the knowledge they mm -hmm. gather in the 50s. And on that, you can see there's a lot of uh, improvements or let's just say changes from that era, the first thing you're going to notice is that the profiles start to get a bit thinner. Okay. So yeah, this definitely is not as thick as that no caster that mm -hmm. I, uh, I was holding. So we're going into uh, sort of a 60s style of uh, profiles. Mm -hmm. They have been changed slightly from the Vintera One series. Okay. They will be like named differently. They will feel relatively the same. They have carried the pickups from the previous range. And the most significant, perhaps, uh, change will be the colors. Mm -hmm. uh, there are new editions of colors. As I mentioned before, no longer there will be mod versions of them, so no be no 60s mods. Okay. And finally, we have the addition of a very important model, which was missing on the first one, which was the thin line. Thin line tally.
So the thin line telly is a very interesting one because it's one of those indie darlings that came through the 60s. Back in the 60s and 70s, um, Fender was struggling to access Ash to make these guitars. So to so make- So is, is it an Ash body on this one? No, 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 that, that's another body, oh, but okay. the previous, you see the, some, some solid body guitars were made from Ash. Oh, I see what you're saying. And that will make them lighter, but uh, it was getting hard to source those woods, so in an effort to reduce the weight of the guitars, they started making those chambers. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, so at a certain point, it just became it, its own thing. Mm. And the thin lines in the current catalog uh, have been a bit of a absent, you know. Yeah. So with the addition of the 60s thin line uh, Ventera, we finally have a good, reasonably priced mm. thin line Telecaster with the Fender badge. Yeah. Uh, without having to go into American Vintage mm -hmm. or maybe a custom shop. Uh, or maybe a signature model, which will you'll see more. Yeah, so it's a good alternative if you don't want to. Spend, it is great, and again, it is a lot of money. Basically, it is the it is it will be the most cost effective one. Yeah, yeah. I love the, the pit range. guard. The pit guard looks crazy. Like you don't see that on a Telecaster. It's a beautiful guitar, and it's it, great. It got really popular in the indie scene and in recent years. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very welcome addition to the yeah. model. And then you said as well with the, I mean, just with the sixties ones in general, rosewood. They've all they've all got rosewood on. I think rosewood is just the perfect wood for either a Strat or a Tele. Like a Tele caster with a rosewood mm. fingerboard is perhaps one of my favorite combinations. Yeah. And and a Stratocaster is just like the uh, sort of a just looks great. You get Strat. some nice like wood wood like grains in there. Like this one, you can see like I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but at the bottom here, there's like a quite a a different color from the from the top to the bottom, and it just looks gives it a bit of character. A bit, of, a bit of spark, a little, a little bit of jazz. Um, but yeah, I like it. 60s, good. Should we move on to the 70s? Groovy. Let's do it. <laughs> have the 70s guitars and honestly these I think are my favorite ones mainly because of this Telecaster but Daniel tell me on the 70s what's what's new what's what's different uh, what are the specs right so uh, first of all uh, talk about a bit of Fender in the 70s mm -hmm. so as some people might remember in the 60s uh, Leo sold the company to CBS. Mm -hmm. So CBS brought some interesting changes to the company and definitely some aesthetic, very uh, interesting things which we see in the 70s more prominently. So the first thing that Fender was trying to do is trying to catch up with the more uh, heavy sounding instruments of that mm -hmm. era, your Gibsons and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So these are much more powerful sounding guitars, a lot more, especially with hum humbuckers. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at this and it's, uh, you know, really, it's it's just, it's a Les Paul, but it's a Fender Les Paul, like, if you really think about it, um, because it has the same kind of feeling as that. It's just because you've got the two humbuckers and you've got like the four-way switches and the big scratch plate and everything and the weather tone switches, but it's not because it's a Fender. It sounds like a Fender, plays like a Fender. And I think that's just what makes this thing, for me, so, so special. I love these 72 guitars. They're just so incredibly cool. It um, is really nice. Uh, plus you get the 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 wide range humbucker. Yes. Which was designed by Seth Lover, who mm -hmm. also worked on the path for the left spools. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, they are supposed to go uh, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Les Pauls. Mm. Uh, of course, the other body will give it a bit of a distinct character yeah. and a more specific Fender sounding yeah. style. Uh, on top of that, the 70s models will have their own uh, era-specific tuning machines, mm -hmm. you know, with the F logo on the back. Yeah. Yeah, the tuning machines are slightly different on this one compared to what we were looking at before with the 50s and 60s ones. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're a little bit more he hexagonal. <laughs> yes. A little bit more edgier uh, before they were obviously a bit like rounder and stuff. And um, of course the big CVS headstock. Yeah, it, obviously you see a Telecaster, you know, you don't see a Telecaster with a big 
kind of strat jumbo headstock on it, but obviously with this one, you do. Yeah, you see, it's uh, CVS wanted the logo, the Fender logo, to be more visible on mm -hmm. stage and on TV. Yeah. So they wanted all the guitars for that era to have that because it will be much easier yeah. uh, for people to see and distinctively see that it's a Fender mm -hmm. guitar. So hence why it's a very um, 70s attribute. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so one of the things we have is that uh, in the previous Vintero One range, we had a 70s mm -hmm. Telecaster uh, Deluxe, but this time it has a tremolo. Yeah. And there's new colors as well. So as you said, Jordan, it's quite an attractive uh, proposition. Uh, on top of that, we have also new colors for the 70s Stratocaster as mm -hmm. well. And also we have the addition of the 70s Jaguar here with us. Uh, so there's no longer a 60s Jaguar as in the previous range, it's now a 70s. 70s Jaguar. With that being said, what is the difference between what was the 60s and now the 70s? Well, um, the difference is the going Jag. to be in, well, first of all, uh, the colors will be more 70s-like. Yeah. Uh, second, the pickups will be more voiced for a 70s kind of style, so they will be punchier mm -hmm. and they will have a bit more tack. Mm -hmm. And finally, you have the neck with the fingerboards, uh, with the maple fingerboard yeah. and the block inlay. So all yeah. very 70 specific uh, details. Of course, as we mentioned, the tuning machines will be 70s as well. It looks very nice, this uh, Jack West. It's got binding on the side as well. It has um, a lot of uh, personality, definitely. Yeah. It's a very good guitar for that alternative style. Mm. If you want something a bit more aggressive sounding, uh, I think it's just great for that. And it's just, again, for me, it's just an all around great alternative darling. Yeah, it's got a little bit of an attitude to it, you know? Could it really, does. Could really like rock out on this and just be like, woo, playing some big, big juicy chords. Correct, and Jordan. it's gonna sound yeah. so nice. Cool. We also have a, well, a, for the for the seventies, there's mm -hmm. also the uh, Mustang competition. Oh yeah, guitars with like the little racing stripes on them. Correct. Now, Very unfortunately, nice. they were not ready for us yet. Uh, they will be available, of course, with the rest of the catalog. Uh, but it's worth mentioning uh, in the seventies era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So obviously, make sure you check out those Mustangs as well. Is that everything for the seventies? Is that everything for the Vintero? We haven't been through the bases yet. We need to check out the bases. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about the basses a bit and then we'll wrap it up. Cool, let's check out some Vintera 2 basses. Here we go. And here we have finally the bases in the Vintero 2 range. Uh, Daniel, this is the 50s Vintero 2 uh, P bass. Tell me a little bit about it. Right, so the 50 P bass is a, a timeless classic. Mm. You know? And this time around, uh, they have been brought back with all the 50s nifty little appointments. You get your analyzed pig gar, uh, you get those beautiful surf colors yeah. uh, from back in the day. And you also get all the specs from, I mentioned before that they're pretty common with them, which is the vintage tall frets. Mm -hmm. There are two different colors. One of them for you is the, I think it's called the desert sun kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a, I don't know how to describe it. You could probably, I mean, you clearly see it on camera, but uh, it's kind of like a creamy white, but not quite like, yeah, desert is probably the best way to, to describe it. It's a very gorgeous color. Yeah, I think it's very that nice. even the pictures sometimes don't kind do of, justice how nice they look. It's kind of goldy. What it, is what it kind of feels like. And correct. obviously it fits really nice with the, with the anodized, anodized uh, pick guard. That is correct, mm. yes. And now there is now a 60s precision bass as well, okay. which is also, again, more voice in the style of the 60s. Mm -hmm. It will have a rosewood finger war. And finally you have, of course, the 60s jazz bass, yeah. which is just, for me, one of the better sounding instruments. Mm -hmm. It's just a Motown classic. That's the P-Bass you could say as well. This time around, 
uh, actual rosewood in the fingerboard, yeah. like the guitar like counterparts. Yeah, yeah. And also you get a Fiesta Red, mm -hmm. and I think it's the Lake Placid Blue mm -hmm. is the other one. Mm -hmm. So just incredible additions to have. Mm -hmm. I think that basses, because they are more flexible into different styles of genres, you can afford to have a retro yeah, base, definitely. And definitely be able to mold that into pretty much any style of music. Yeah, like you could play this if you were in a in like a heavy punk band. Like Absolutely, it would look pretty cool if and you did that. Totally, and um, for any kind of a of a more sort of a jazz or prog rock or mm -hmm. any kind of act like that, a jazz face is always a great addition yeah. at to your. And on these as well, you've got these little these little thumb rests. Yeah, so this time too. they have Fender has decided to uh, include the. Uh, the thumb rest already pre-installed. Is that new for Vintero 2? Well, yes, because on, in the past they had, uh, I believe the pig guard had the holes for that. Oh, if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to, yeah, yeah. but this time just to mix it up a bit, mm. they have come with the uh, thumb rest pre-installed yeah. on them as well. But then as well as the P and the jazz bass, you've also got the Mustang and the Tele bass? Correct. There's a Mustang competition which will match the same 60s uh, Competition Mustang guitars. Okay, with that uh, like, racing stripey thing on it. Absolutely, kind of very similar, just in, bass in, version. In two colors, in orange, yeah. and you get your uh, blue one as well. Nice. And finally, there is uh, that also was not available for us yet. Mm. Uh, is the seventies Telecaster bass. Yeah. Now uh, again, a bit of history. You know, CBS trying, uh, you know, looking into what else they could add to the catalog in the early 70s. They took pretty much the shape of the original P bass, which didn't have the contour yet. Mm -hmm. It was more of a slap body kind of thing. And they brought a P bass uh, with the sort of a Telecaster, which was also yeah. the original P bass uh, headstock. And first they had a single coil, but fortunately Fender was wise enough to, for this Telecaster 70s, uh, bass, they have put the humbucker there, mm -hmm. the wide range sort of a bass version of the humbucker. Yeah. Again, in two very beautiful colors. I think uh, it looks great. Like, it's nice to see a bass like that. And it's not like uh, the good thing with, with that and with the Pantera is like you said before, it's 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 affordable. You know, wouldn't really find a, a Telecaster bass like that that's going to be around that price point. Pretty much not. I think a few years ago there was a Squire version of mm -hmm. that bass. It was in the core catalog for a few years, but this time it's now an actual Fender badge yeah. uh, product. And I think it's a great addition just to make things up a bit and to add something who, again, if we're looking for something punchier and with a very deep sound, uh, but you still want to have that sort of a Fender style product. Anything else you want to talk about with the yes. guitar range before we get uh, The Again, one of the other models that was not here on time is one of the most important ones, which is mm -hmm. the Fender Bass 6. Yeah, so it's like uh, an in-between of like a bass and a guitar. Yeah, Basics, so... Basics, look, they just look amazing. I mean, we'll put a picture on screen so you can see how it looks. It's fantastic. It's a 30-inch scale, mm -hmm. you know, six-string, sort of a blend of bass and guitar. Yeah. And these are, I think, uh, within the alt rock and shoegaze mm. and all those sort of... Uh, uh, surging new genres is yeah. a fantastic option as yeah. well. They're really popular recently with a lot of like heavier bands and stuff. They are, and mm. uh, although Squire has been yeah, Squire using has been some very interesting thing. models, there hasn't been an actual Fender mm. one in the core catalog. Again, you could go to Custom Shop, but this one is far more affordable. It's very well spec as well. Uh, we'll try to do something with that one mm -hmm. for for an upcoming uh, video. But yes, it's important that we mention it because if you're the kind of guy who already has every guitar or a lot of guitars, yeah, and you probably you think, don't have a base six. If so. you haven't, if you think you've seen it all, I I really encourage you to go to a shop and try a base six yeah. because it's a unique experience, yeah, yeah. especially if you had a couple of pedals in. Mm -hmm. Cool. Is that everything? We I covered the whole Vintero range? I think so. We have covered most of it. Of course, there are a few color variations to the products we have talked about today. Mm -hmm. And there will be, you know, uh, some, if you want to get into a nitty gritty, more sort of in-depth spec stuff. But we want it to be more sort of a general yeah. today. We want to just explain the, the range better. Yeah, if you want to learn more, obviously, head over to the Gear for Music website. And we've got everything on there that you can buy from the Vintero 2 range. So obviously, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, and yeah, so that's everything for today. Thank you so much for being here with me and going through the full Vintero 2 range. Ah, thank you, Jordan. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave any comments you might have about the Vintero 2 range. Are you going to pick one up? Let us know 
down in the comments and we'll see you next time. See you later. See Bye. You guys.